Hey, this is Abram with BSA Bushcraft. I wanted to show you guys how to properly lash a tripod. Um, if you lash it this way, it is really tight. It stays um, lashed together for a very long time. And it's good for a lot of things. Um, a tripod can be used for a ton of things. The first thing is, what I like to use this for is, this is at my base camp. This is at my base camp. And I like to have a line, which I'll show you guys, running down so I can hang a pot. And I'll demonstrate that. You can use this to make structures. This can be, if you make this in a larger scale, with larger lumber, you can make it for a shelter. Um, there's a ton of uses for a tripod. You can smoke meat over it. You can make a rack and smoke meat. You can make all kinds of different cook systems with it. You can, I've saw people set up filtration devices with this. You can build a signaling fire. There's all kinds of things you can do with this tripod. It's a very versatile item in your camp and it's very easy to make if you have cordage to do so. So if you guys stick with me, I'll show you guys how I like to lash my tripods. Right here I have what I need for my tripod. There's just a few things here to make a tripod. The first one is cordage, some type of cordage. This is number 36 card Mariner's Bank line. It really binds on itself very well, so that's my cordage of choice for this. I like it a lot more than paracord for lashing, so that's the cordage I'll be using. We'll go ahead and go with what I have are three, about six and a half to seven foot um, live poles for my tripod, and they're decently straight. And one thing to keep in mind here is um, this all depends, the size of this is, to, is gonna depend on what you're using it for. If you're gonna use it for a shelter, you're gonna want it larger lumber and taller. This is just to hang over a fire, so I like normally to be at least six foot. These poles, these are a six and a half, so these are really well um, for this. And I like the, at the tops, clear all the knots and stuff for the lashing to be more clean. And I like them to be live. I prefer that over dead, but if you have to use dead, it'll work just as well. Um, of course, unless you're using, um, bearing a lot of weight under it. These are live, like I said, these are live ash poles is what these are. They're really strong, um, and they're pretty straight. And I have three of them. So the cordage is number 36 bank line, tarred, and then I have three poles, and then I have a, just a stick I broke off. I'll use it kind of like a toggle, and I'll use it, I'll wrap it around, and I'll pull to tighten my lashing up. Like I said, that binds up very well, so this lashing will come together great. And you want these to be as straight as possible so that your lashing will become clean. And one more thing to keep in mind, if you could get these elevated up, like I have here, I just have them elevated, and off the ground, it's gonna make the lashing a lot easier to perform. And it will be a lot cleaner and a lot tighter and it will work better for you in the long run. you're going to lash this up you want an elevated surface if you can get it and I like to keep at least um, probably about six inches at the top and I'm gonna lash downwards when I do this in a downward motion so the first knot you're gonna need to know is called a timber hitch what I like to do is just fold it make a loop like this and I'll go over all these knots in a different video to show you guys exactly how to do them I'll try to get this a close-up so you guys can see just flip it over like that just add make a bite in it and just twist it when you twist it you're gonna have a loop I like to just come around take the whole entire line like this and just fold it in so it's a pretty simple knot and it's a self-releasing knot and it's self tightens so I'll show you guys up close so you guys can see I'm just gonna take a bite just like that, twist, twist a couple times, about six times is what I did there, just grab it, 
make a loop. I'll do it one more time down here. And this is your starting knot. So twist. And when you get used to it, it's easy to do. Come down, make a loop. Make sure it's going to fit over your first pull. So I'll take this pull, my first one, and get this all situated up and put it just around it. Just like this. And that is the timber hitch. Like I said, I like to get at least six inches down. And you notice you're going to have this line here. Don't worry about that. That's just um, from the rest from your timber hitch. Make sure these are all evened up and as even as you can get them. Like this. And what you're going to want to do is adjust this up like this. And this tag just kind of twist it around here. That's going to be alright. And all you're going to do is bring it over and a neat lashing is a good lashing. Just bring it over, top, and under. Keep them next to each other and you're going this way, downward, not up towards the top. You want to go down and just keep them lined up and just do the same thing. And this is when your toggle is going to come in handy when you go to tighten this. Just keep them together and after doing it one time, one full time like that, I like to just wrap my toggle around it and crank down on this sucker. Just crank down. How you can get it, just what you're going to want, and just take this off the toggle, keep your toggle right there, and continue. I apologize about the background noise with my dog. And just continue doing this. I like to do it about seven times, seven or eight times. Go ahead and go with eight times. Do this eight times and keep it neat and tight is the key. When you're making this lash, you want these poles to stay side by side as much possible as possible because if they get twisted up, it's just going to make the lashing hard to do at the end when you're doing the fraps. So I've came around eight times. Alrighty, I'm just going to tighten this up, crank it down really good, trying to keep it all together as much as I can. Pull as tight as you can. When you got that thing as tight as you can get it. And these are pretty darn tight. I'll tighten it one more time here. Just to make sure I can't get it no tighter. I like these really tight. If I have to put my one foot on it, I will. And that's all tightened up. Get that toggle around off. Then what I'm going to want to do here is the fraps. This is my starting point, this pull. I'm going to bring it around this way one time and then come around the back in between this pull up here and I'll show you guys I'm just bringing it around that pull up there and I'm coming between now I'm going to come between them and wrap down through here and back up I'm going between them I'm not going long ways I'm going I'm not going this way I'm wrapping this way now and you just want to do I do about three or four on these and then I'll tie it off and it will be good.
once you've done your fraps here, which is the front, what you're gonna wanna do is frap this other side. Since you did long ways of wrapping, now you're doing frapping this way. So you, you, like I said, you're wrapping this way and frapping this way between the pulls, okay? So what I'm doing is just coming up around them, just like I did with the other one. And to keep in mind, you want these to be as flat up against each other as possible. Don't let them twist or you're gonna have a heck of a time. So you may have to like lift one of these up back here because this last one's gonna be where all your trouble is gonna be. And what I, with tightness, what I like to do is sometimes is break a stick or something and lean up here somewhere to give me an area so I can pull this and sometimes you just have to lift it up manually and pull it in between. You've got two there and like I said, I like four, so I'm gonna tighten this and do two more. So I like four total on the fraps. Once I have my fraps done right here, it's very simple what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pull this down and I will bring it back down through here. And notice that these are flat, like I said, that's how you want them. This lashing takes probably about um, 10 to 15 minutes to get a really good one, for me at least because it can be tricky. What I'm gonna do is just lift this up and I'm gonna tie a clove hitch right here. So, what I may actually do now is find a piece of wood or something of that sort. This is just gonna help me snap a couple pieces of wood here and lift this up and put them right there. So that I do not have to keep holding it up and I can have two hands free and I may lift it up more like that and I'm going to just do a clove hitch it's pretty self-explanatory of how to tie a clove hitch you just want to pull your line through and make an X so I'm going to have to Go over one more time here. Pull this line through. And this is tricky having a whole bunch of line, but sometimes that's what you have to work with if you want to have a pot hanger or something of that sort. When you're done and the outcome, you're just gonna have to work with all this line. All right, I have an X right here, and this is kind of hard to do on camera, getting the angles. I'm just gonna feed my line right here through that X straight through it and like I said I'll make videos on all these knots how to properly tie them in the future but you can actually use any knot here I just like the clove hitch personally and I like to bring it right up against this and tighten it down and when I tighten that down hoping you guys can see that Right there, I tighten it down. Like I said, you can use any knot. I may actually grab my tightening toggle right there and tighten it way down, cinch it. And actually, I can pull these two out of the way, these two sticks. They're lodged in there pretty well. And tighten it. I may actually even put my boot up here. Okay. Once I get, get it tightened, I'm just gonna come up here and tie a simple stopper knot, an overhand knot, it's all it is, to butt up against it so that I am sure it will not come undone. But I pulled that so tight, I doubt it would even come done undone if I had that done. So right there is a proper lash that I like to do. This is a lashing I like to do. You can do it another way. It's not necessarily proper this way. Uh, I'm not saying to do it this way, but this is my proper way of doing a lash. It's pretty down and dirty, simple. And like I said, I have a whole bunch of line left to use for to hang a pot or whatever I want to hang. 
I can dry clothes, whatever. This tripod's multifunctional, and that's what I like about it. So I have my tripod that I lashed together, and I've got that. I've already cut this bank line. Like I said, I kept, I cut it so I can hang a pot over the fire if I choose to. That's what I made this for, it's like a cook, cook system. And these poles are really big. They're a lot bigger than I expect them to be, but this will be fine. I'll just have to lower it. What I'm gonna do is spread this out for the first time. It's gonna be really tight. But that's the way these things are gonna be, and you want them to be. See, this one's one to shoot off this way. You're just gonna have to fix that. And this one's really tight, the middle one. That's what you want. And this is just the size that you can go up, you can go back if you want it high, or you can go this way. All right, so I have it right now, and it's really sturdy I guarantee that and I have that tag I'm gonna show you guys what this tag is for it's a very cool feature you can do with these tripods and what I have to carry out this plan with it is just a toggle I put a v-notch right there very simple and this is gonna um, dictate the size of this toggle is gonna dictate the size of your bale of your pot that's what this is for I don't have one to show you guys but it's just a ring and this is gonna sit in that ring and it's going to hold the pot. I'm sure many of you have seen it. And you're just going to connect this to the end of the bank line. I have my V-notch and my toggle. Then I have my bank line. Now I'm going to show you guys how to tie the lark's head. Very simple knot I'm going to use to connect it. I'm just going to double it over like this. Very simple. I'm going to put it over on the sides, fold it over on itself, and do that. Then I would stick my toggle, say it would be my pinky, right in there, and tighten it down. I'll show you guys one more time. I'm just going to double it over like this. Fold it. And turn it. And then, you see that, that loop I made? I would just stick my toggle in. That's all you have to do. This time I will put the toggle on. I'll attach the toggle. I'll make a little bit bigger loop here. Fold it over. Just like this. Make it a little bit bigger right there. Put my toggle on. There's a lot of knots on this. But that would be okay. This piece of wood. Just got to make this loop big enough. So it slide down to my V notch. Right there. Tighten it. And what I can do is I can do a safety knot, which is just tying an overhand right there. And it's attached and ready to go. I have my toggle attached, and this is exactly how it would be. It's very simple to adjust this, and that's why I like it. You can do two things here. One of which you can just bring it up and over this pole, like this, and it would adjust the size of what you want it. You would not want it this high, but say I do want it that high for a minute, I could put my haversack on there. Hangs on there perfect. Could do that. Or, and that's the same um, way that the bale is going to put on. Just like that, and it's going to hang over. Very simple. Or, you can undo this here, back down to the size, and very simply bring it back down. Just pull, use one of your pulls here to adjust it. If you want it down, you can bring it down by just bending it like that. Or you can bring it up, just like that. And personally, I like to use this system here to I like to bring it around that way adjusting it but that's my personal preference there 
And when this is all done and over with, I'll put my haversack down. This should be able to hold your weight. No doubt. It should be able to hold your weight easily. No doubt. Without moving. But you should have no problem putting all your weight on this. And it should hold it without breaking. That's why I like using live branches over dead ones. So say I want to pull this out this way. It's still going to hold your weight easily. And that's why I like this tripod system. Because it can hold a lot of weight and it's very simple to make. I hope this video helped you guys. This is how I like to lash a tripod. It's very simple to do when you get the hang of it. The key, I think, is to keep everything neat when you're lashing it and tight. And you will end up with a very nice lashing. So, any comments, questions, um, drop them in the comment section and I will answer them. You can email me at bsabushcraft.gmail.com. I'll answer them there too. I have a Facebook page. Be sure to check it out. I appreciate all your comments, subscriptions, likes, and everything. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.